Hi, welcome to Don's Keyter. In this video, I am going to show you how to display the real-time Arduino sensor readings on our Node-RED application using WebSocket. So, I have here my ESP32 microcontroller connected to an LDR or a photoresistor running the Arduino framework and I wanted the sensor readings to be displayed in my Node-RED application running inside my Raspberry Pi. And I have here my Node-RED application where I have defined my flow. We're going to access now the web application that will display my real-time sensor readings by using this URL. So this is the URL that we're going to connect. So let's click enter. So this is my web application running inside my Node-RED tool. The left-hand side will display the latest sensor readings while the right-hand side is the historical graph of sensor readings. I have chosen an LDR or a photoresistor as it is easy to change the readings of this sensor. And if I put my fingers on top of the LDR and block the light, then you, you would see that the sensor reading should go down. Currently, the reading is from 2700. So I'm going to put my finger right now. So as you can see, the sensor reading suddenly went down. I'll remove my hand. Then you can see that the sensor reading now goes up again. So let's try again. So, as you can see from the graph and from how I put my finger on top of the LDR, then you would notice that my Node-RED web application is displaying the sensor readings in real time. Would you like to know how I did this? Then let's start exploring. For me to continue creating useful content, please share, like, or comment on every video that I have created. Or better yet, subscribe to my page and click the notification button for you to receive the latest updates from me. But if you are generous enough, then you could support me by buying me a copy or through my patreon.com account. This would get me more motivated to create useful video content with key code and excellent pipe up. Thank you! Before we proceed, let us discuss again our scenario. Suppose you have a sensor that is connected to one of your microcontrollers. In this case, I'm using an ESP32 that is running an Arduino framework and you wanted to monitor the sensor readings in real time. Then you can use web sockets in this case. Take note that the Arduino and its attached sensors could be placed in a different location from our Node-RED application. And they could only communicate through the network. Our Node-RED with Arduino interface project actually contains the following three components. I have here my ESP32 with the Arduino framework, which is the source of our sensor readings, and my Raspberry Pi, where we are going to create our Node-RED WebSocket server. Inside our Node-RED, we also created a web application that displays the real-time sensor readings of our Arduino sensor. As you can see, this is a custom web application that I have created running inside our Node-RED programming tools. All three components will communicate Two web sockets as we are dealing with real time data, so this protocol is appropriate. So, this is the schematic diagram of the Arduino program that is connected to our LDR sensor. You can replace the LDR 
with any other sensor that you want, I am just using the LDR as the readings could change instantaneously, making it ideal for real-time sensor display. Now, so much for theory, so let's go down to the code. The code for this project is available in my GitHub repositories. As there are two different projects involved, so we will discuss them separately. I'll first start with the Arduino, which is the source of our sensor readings. So this is the code of my Arduino that reads the LDR sensor. So I have here the main.cpp, which is the main program of our project. So the question is, how do we send these WebSocket messages from our Arduino? So I'm using a library called the Arduino WebSockets. So I have just added the library dependency here in my platform.cni file. And the main.cpp is the main code that executes the reading of the LDR and the sending of the readings to our Node-RED WebSocket server. So I'm going to walk to you through to the project. So this code is where we import the Wi-Fi library for our ESP32 and ESP8266. We have also imported the WebSocket client also in our main.cpp. So the code in here is where we define the GPIO pin that connects to our LDR or photoresistor. You just need to replace the SSID and the password variables to match your Wi-Fi network configuration. Lastly, we define a WebSocket client object that we will use to send the WebSocket messages. So, in the setup function, it contains the initialization code and it does the following. First, it sets the baud rate for our serial monitor and then it connects to our Wi-Fi. And then, we begin the WebSocket connection to our WebSocket server and we just added the reconnection here just in case the WebSocket connection went down. So, the connection is set as, as 5,000 or 5 seconds. Next, this is the interval of our sensor readings. So right now, the interval is set as one second. So in the loop function, we read the sensor reading. Right now, it's reading the analog read pin. And then after reading the analog read pin, we will just call the WebSocket.loop, which will check if there is any WebSocket messages coming in here. When the interval is exceeded, then we will send the readings through the WebSocket.SendText command. So this is the uh, command that will send the WebSocket messages to our WebSocket server. So that's all for the code for our Arduino. Now let's discuss the WebSocket flows. So this is the code for the Node-RED WebSocket server flow. And this is also available in my GitHub repository. I will post a link in the description of this video so you can check out the code. So the image will show you the two sections of our Node-RED flow. The top section shows you the nodes needed in order to create a web application that will display our sensor readings. The bottom section will show you the nodes which handle our WebSocket exchange by creating a WebSocket server inside our Node-RED application. Let's try to walk through to what each node is doing so we would know how the WebSocket server and the web application are configured. First, we will check the WebSocket server. So there is the WebSocket in here and there is a WebSocket out in here. As you can see, the WebSocket in and the WebSocket out is configured to read or listen to the at backslash ws backslash readings. This is important as we are going to use this in the Arduino. If we check back to our Arduino program, then you would see that I have added this path which is matching the backslash forward slash ws slash readings. Next, after the WebSocket in node, I have added the function node here. So the function node just sets the session property to blank values. And this is used so that we could broadcast the messages to our WebSocket out node. 
As you can see, the WebSocket in node is connected to the WebSocket out node. And for us to receive the message coming from our WebSocket in node, then you need to clear the session. Next, we will check how we set up the web application that will display our LDR or photo resistor readings. The first one is this the HTTP in node. As you can see, in the HTTP in node, we set the URL to slash sensor readings for our HTTP in node so that we could access our web application using the backslash sensor readings. If you check back the web socket here, then you would see that it is slash the sensor reading. Next, the template is here for the JavaScript. As you can see, the template is named JavaScript as it contains the logic for handling the WebSocket connection and the creation of our plotly.js chart. It also contains the logic that would asynchronously display the latest sensor readings. Next, the template named CSS will contain our cascading style sheet classes, which we will have a little bit of styling on our page. Then we have a template here called the HTML template, which contains the page structure that we will use to display the real-time sensor readings and its chart. So as you can see, we terminate the web application with this HTTP response node. If you wanted to learn or know more about how the HTML, the JavaScript, and the CSS is configured, I highly suggest that you take a look at the companion write-up of this page. That is all for the demo and the code walkthrough. The companion write-up of this video contains a much detailed information regarding the code. So if you wanted to check it out, just go to the description of this video so that you could see where you can check the write-up. I hope you learned something. Happy exploring!